Hi everyone, my name is Claire Freehafer and today I will be giving you all a brief introduction to Google Cast. So first of all, what is Google Cast? Basically, it's Google's version of the Apple, Apple TV, Amazon Fire Stick, or Roku. It's just an easy way to stream media from different services to your TV. So the Google Cast software is packaged in the Chromecast hardware, which are the hockey pucks on the left over there. Um, and there's one key difference between the Chromecast and its competitors, and it's sort of hinted at already, but there is no built-in user interface for Chromecast, hence no remote. All of the control and user interaction is done through an app either on your phone, uh, tablet, or your computer. So to sort of briefly explain what that actually means for when you're using it, um, I'm going to use an example of Netflix. I want to cast a Netflix show. Um, so first, I open the Netflix app on my phone. And then if my phone is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as my Chromecast, uh, a button will appear. Um, I don't know how well you can see it, but it looks like the same thing as in the upper right-hand corner. Um, then you click that. You get a list of all the Chromecasts. Mine happens to be named Spooky Chris. Then you would select that, and you're connected. Then in the app, you can click on the episode you want to watch, hit play, and it'll play. And then if you want to pause it, stop it, switch episodes, all that is done through the app. So because you're working with two separate devices with Chromecast, you, the apps actually have two components. The first is the sender application. And this is, like I said, where all of the user interaction is done. Typically, it's built into an already existing app, for example, the Netflix app or their website. Um, and all, uh, all that this application is doing is sending and receiving messages to and from the Chromecast. It's not actually streaming the media. What is streaming the media is the receiver application. And this is the software on the Chromecast. Um, so what Google Cast actually is, in simple terms, is it's a lightweight Chrome browser. So it loads HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from a specific URL over the Wi-Fi network. This also means it has its own IP address so that it can communicate. So here is a diagram um, I'm going to show you of how, a more technical diagram of how all of this works and how they communicate, because that will be the focus of the rest of my talk, how these things communicate with one another. So on the left, you have your Wi-Fi network with your Chromecast and then your phone or laptop. And then on the right is the internet with the server that has the receiver application you want and the media. So for example, the Netflix server. So first, the sender application will send a session request to your de Chromecast device. And associated with, associated with that session um, is an application ID. And this application ID has a URL associated with it. And that URL is where the Chromecast knows to send a request to to get the receiver application. So once it's done that, the server is like, OK, I'll send this back to you. So it does, uh, sends back the receiver application, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and whatnot, and any media that was also requested. And then the receiver application is loaded in the mini Chrome browser on your Chromecast. And then once it's all set up and ready to go, it'll send a message back to your sender application saying that everything is hunky-dory. So now for some code. Like I said, I'm going to talk about how these two components interact with one another. So I'm going to start with the receiver the receiver application. Google offers three different receiver applications for developers to use in their app. The first is the default media receiver, which is hosted on their servers. It's just a simple video player. You have no control over it at all. The second is a stylized media receiver, which is a video player that you have a bit more control over, like how it looks and if you want to change the colors or add a logo or something. And the third is a custom receiver, which you build completely from scratch. And this code here is an example of the most bare bones custom receiver you can have if you want to have a functioning receiver. So, um, so line seven is the the video element. This is like the actual where the actual video player will render with the ID of media. And then using that um, on line nine, we save the instance of this video player in a variable, the media element variable. And then with that, we create the media manager. And the media manager is what allows 
uh, communication of media related commands and status updates. So like play, pause, is playing, is pause, and stuff like that. And then you need to create or get an instance of the cast receiver manager, which is responsible for system communication. So like um, session connection or disconnection or errors, can't connect to the, to the Wi-Fi, et cetera. And then line 12, just start it all up. So now the sender application. So once, once they've communicated with one another and are talking back and forth, you get this cast context object. And from that, you get an instance of it and then get the current session. So the current connection you have, and then you would save that. Um, so the, the cast context is what will trigger the events and the cast state. So need that. Um, yeah, so once you have your session, you need to tell it what media you want to stream. So you create a media info object, or this with um, the URL of the media you want to stream, and then what type of media it is, if it's a video or if it's just music. Then with that, you create a new load request, and that load request uh, is fed into the load media method on the cast session, uh, which returns a promise. So if it fails, you can send out an error code. If not, you can say, yay, it worked. So then you have the media, but now you need to actually be able to control it. So you create, you create a new uh, remote player instance, and then with that, you create the controller for the remote player instance. Um, and this allows you to play and pause and fast forward, whatever. And then with that player controller, you can also add custom event listeners, like for example, in this one, um, this is just saying that if the receiver device sends a message back that something about the media info has changed, you can grab that media info off of your player instance and save it as variable and do whatever you want with it. So that was kind of a lot of code. <laughs> so I want to just have, I have a visualization of it for you because for me anyway, that kind of helps, especially when a lot of things are moving around. So we have the cast session on our connected sender. And then we create our media info object. We send the media info to the receiver device with the load media function. And then what the receiver does is the media manager takes that media info and sets it as the media element. And basically what that does is just sets the source URL for the video player. And then the Chromecast will broadcast the status back to your connected sender saying it's all loaded. You can hit play now. And then you can hit play, send a message back to the Chromecast, and every time the status is updated on the Chromecast, it'll rebroadcast it. So your phone and, and the Chromecast are always in sync as to what is going on. Um, so yeah, I wish I could talk, I could talk for hours about Chromecast because I think it's wonderful and better than all the other ones, but that's a different talk. So thank you for watching.